You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 230 of Teach Better Talk Podcast. I know we made jokes. Don't worry. This is not the last episode. My name is Ray Hewart, and I'm here with my very, very irritating co-host that just keeps showing up, Mr. Jeff Gargas. Jeff, I've gotten a lot of Jeff Gargas today, so I'm about I'm about out of, you of your, Jeff Gargas. We've done time. one podcast. No, we did a daily drop-in together this morning. Oh, yeah, that was today. That's how today is. Does it feel went. like the longest, yeah, the longest day ever? Went. I didn't, that was today. We did do a daily drop in today. Um, by See, the guys, way, podcast, even, daily drop ins are still happening remember. all the way until December 18th, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 8 30 a.m. Eastern time. Sorry, that wasn't planned, but I thought I'd throw it in there. Um, as, I just want to acknowledge that you didn't even remember that you had talked to me all day and you're like, what Ray? You like you're like wasn't that last week? You've had a long day, I guess. I apparently it has been yes, but I th- you know whatever. Just before this, you said that this was your favorite part of the day, but you weren't referring to podcasting with me. You weren't referring to our amazing guests. You were actually referring purely to just being able to talk to Chris in in our recordings because we talked to him a lot before or when we make mistakes. Let me clarify. Let me clarify. Our guest is superb she is the mother Teresa in my mind i love maggie we will get into all that stuff if you're watching on you youtube can... just so you know this is how you clarify right here this is this is clarify um what i was trying to say is that mondays are a little lengthy for me yeah because i are. just you know kind of go 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 it is what it is and one of the the things i find every single monday is i find myself laughing to myself because i'm recording my screen but we're not really recording yet. So I just talked to Chris. Chris edits all of our podcasts. So he has to like like cut 10 minutes of my audio because I'm just talking to him about nothing. And then he's like, oh, finally they got into the episode. So thanks, and so Chris. I was, I was this moment where you and I are like prepping for the, the, the intro and you're like, I'm recording. Are you recording? I'm like, no. And you're like, oh, I've been recording for three minutes or five minutes or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's so I don't forget guys, you know, that we would get talking and then I'd be like, Oh, is there supposed to be a red blinking button going on? (laughs) Oh, we'd figure it out. Um, anyway, so this has been a fun week. So this is coming out on Thursday. Obviously we record these on Mondays, but it's coming out pretty quick on Thursday. So daily drop-ins are still going on, but something else exciting happens. So for you and me, it's tomorrow for you listening right now or two days ago on Tuesday. Um, we launched a brand new course over at teachbettercabby.com. More importantly, it was the first course ever by Dave Schmidto. His first course Dr. with us. Dr. Dave um, Schmidto. Yeah, Dr. Woo! Dave Schmidto. Um, so if you don't know Dave Schmidto, figure out how to spell Schmidto and you'll find him everywhere. Um, oh, oh but, I know. I know. Oh, yes. Do you know? Um, can you tell us about Dave Schmidto? I know Dave how Schmidow? to spell his name. Oh, you know how to spell well, it? Well, I have you, to write it. You're looking somewhere. It's S C H M I T T O U Schmidt. It is. Yes. That's correct. I can't say Chad's last name, but I can spell <laughs> Schmidt. <laughs> and Dave is our director of uh, leadership and development. He also runs our, our admin mastermind that happens every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern time and 7 p.m. Eastern time and brings so much knowledge and, and just a wealth of experience to the team. Uh, he also joins me every uh, Wednesday. Well, he joins Chad every Wednesday morning for the mastermind of Rewind. Then he joins me every Wednesday evening, 5 o'clock Eastern time, for our brain break. Um, he's with you on tomorrow. He's going to be running some of the the the, um, the drop-ins in the next couple of weeks. And he just has his course out. So the course is Lead and by Empower, uh, which Dave's the, – the whole thing is like to give them – to give your people a say in things and, and get their input so that you don't have to get their buy-in. Um, and it's a really cool sort of – kind of takes you on like this like reflective journey of who you are as a leader and walks you through different steps of how to have those difficult difficult conversations, how to put people in the right position to lead and how um I love Dave talks a lot about like I'm gonna leave it at this. I'm not gonna go under any depth like how you're not supposed to be creating a bunch of little itty bitty schmitties but creating other leaders and stuff. And I really like it. So it's a great course. I I'm fortunate enough I got to edit a bunch of videos and be a part of that and stuff. But um I'm excited for it. It's over at teachbetteracademy.com right now 
If you have the $9 a month membership, it's already in your My Courses dashboard. Otherwise, uh, get it. Uh, if you're on our list, Ray already emailed you about it anyway. So it's good stuff. Um, I'm excited for it. I am such a Dave Schmidt fan. You guys know that That's already, true. but I'm thrilled that he finally put out this course because Dave is always sharing little tidbits of information as well as obviously goofing around with you. And I just love anything that Dave touches is gold. And so the fact that we have a Dave Schmidt course in our academy, I feel like yeah, was awesome. kind of a bucket list like <laughs> item for the team. I'm very, very excited. And in addition to that, you guys know recently along with courses that we've been publishing every single month in our academy, we also have compiled blog series yes. that will be supportive of that course. So if you're not sure you want to get straight into the course, like you have a ton of different options to start to dabble with the information, obviously reach out to Dave. He's a great resource, whether you take the course or not, but also go to teachbear.com slash blogs. And you can see a lot of different authors, a lot of different voices talking through this conversation. And Dave will be one of those voices that you can read about. So there's a lot of different ways to begin this conversation. And although I know it's really strategically targeted towards leaders, I know that with the content that I've seen from the course, I think a teacher, any anybody as a leadership role, whether it's your title or just your mindset, really can benefit from this type of instruction. Agreed. Love so it. So fun. Let's talk about so someone fun. else. Congrats, that, that, Dave. Congrats, Dave. Yes. Let's talk about someone else that you're a huge fan of. Uh, and that's our guest, Maggie Gifford. Um, Maggie has been in our network for a long, long time. Um, she is one of our go-to grid method rock stars, actually, that we call on all the time to just like, hey, can we talk about you to people that are wondering about the grid method? Would you jump on a phone call? We send an email to, to share things, whatever. Um, and she talks a little bit about that, but she really shares her story. Um, she gets pretty deep into like her story and different things here. She is a now a first grade teacher. She's been a third grade teacher, a second grade teacher, a first grade teacher, back to now, back to first grade. Um, uh, 18 years experience, so a wealth of experience there, a wealth of knowledge. One of the nicest people in the entire world that you will ever meet, um, and uh, one of I, you know, one of our amazing featured speakers at Teach Better Conference 2019 as well. Um, which, if you were there and you saw her, you would never believe that that was like her first presentation that she ever did. It was awesome. So, uh, really excited to have her on. Ray, anything else you want people to focus on specifically from this episode, or just more fans. I'm a huge Maggie fan. You guys know that we always love connecting with new people. Um, Maggie is truly like a member of the family. Like I don't consider her new at all. She's a, she's about as in the family and in the trenches as all of us on the team are. And so I really want to encourage you to connect with her, not for any other reason besides to, you have to surround yourself with good people. Maggie's good people go connect with her. Um, she's doing incredible things. She's incredibly humble and uh, I'm just so excited for you guys to hear her story. And with that, let's get episode 230 with Maggie Gifford. Hey, what's up, podcast? It's Jeff. Don't worry. We're going to get right back into the episode, but I want to make sure you are aware of a brand new course that we have out in the Teach Better Academy right now, Leading by Empowering. This is the first course by our good, good friend and our director of leadership and development, Dave Schmidto. Uh, within this course, he covers a lot of stuff. He, he really goes through a self-reflective journey of figuring out who you are as a leader. He talks about opening the door for difficult conversations with your staff. He talks about becoming more knowable than knowledgeable and continues on about uh, relationships, risk taken, celebrations, leadership, and growth. It is over at teachbetteracademy.com. If you already have the $9 a month uh, membership. It'll be in your My Courses dashboard now. Otherwise, head over to teachbetteracademy.com. Use the code Podcast Talk to save 25% right now on Leading by Empowering. All right, let's get back to the episode. All right, we're here and, and we are chatting with Maggie Gifford. And Maggie, it's so awesome to have you on the podcast. We were just talking about how it's hard to believe that you were just now coming on the podcast because you've been a part of our world for a long time now um, and we've loved you for a long time now. And um, it's about time. That's that's really what I'm getting to. Uh, really excited to kind of dive into your story more, to share your story more. Um, before we get too far into things, how are you feeling right now? I am excited. Um, like you said, I've been part of the Teach Better team um, in your circle for a while. So I'm excited to finally kind of be on the podcast and share a little bit about myself. Um, it's also snowing for the first time. And... Um, I'm super excited about that. I'm like a little kid when it 
starts to snow. So I'm hoping for that four inches that they're calling for. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can we clarify? Maggie, this isn't, this is our circle. You were like, oh, I've been part of your circle. Like you are <laughs> just as much a part of this family than I am. So this is our circle that you're a part of, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that it's snowing. I love when it snows. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> So fun. Well, I know that uh, we are going to get into so many good discussions today. As we were talking about before we recorded, like we've all chatted so many times. I feel like this is just one of the times being recorded. So I'm really excited to dive into some of the questions we ask on the podcast. But before we get into all that, I want our listeners to really learn all about you. So would you mind like describing yourself, kind of answering that age old question of what you do in education? Yeah. So, um, The short and sweet answer is I'm a first grade teacher. Um, I teach at a small um, district in rural Southeast Ohio. We're very rural, um, very small district. Um, I am a primary teacher. This is my 18th year. Um, I started my career in special education. Um, I actually started as a teacher of students with severe behavior disorders And my very first job right out of college was a self-contained room with six boys who had um, severe behavior issues. So I always say that if I can survive that right out of college, I can survive anything. (laughs) Um, So I moved from special education to third, and then um, I moved down to first and second. And then I actually moved back to first this year so I could um, teach my daughter's class, which has been um, fun and eye-opening and frustrating and all of the things. Um, But it's been exciting. It's been good for us. Um, So that's kind of the basic answer. Um, I like to think that the cheesy answer is um, I really inspire children to love learning and to build um, that foundation so that they can go out and change the world someday. Um, I say that's the cheesy answer because I think that that's the perception from um, outsiders that that's what teachers are doing and that's what teachers should be doing. Um, And anybody who's in in education knows that that's (laughs) a lot more difficult and complicated Um, and a lot messier than what it sounds like. Um, But that's really part of my why. And um, that's what I like to do when I come in every day. And and right now, are you, are you face to face? Are you virtual? Are you hybrid? How are you set up right now? Uh, We were face to face up until um, the week before Thanksgiving. Um, We have had very low numbers of cases in our county. So um, we were face to face. But then um, once cases started to rise, we did go virtual until Thanksgiving break. Um, But tomorrow we are coming back face to face. So we'll get to see each other again. Um, And fingers crossed we get to stay that way. Yeah, hopefully you do. Um, Awesome. I I love your cheesier version. So you're (laughs) you know, keep rocking that version. I like it. Uh, I want to talk to this, uh, throw this at you, you know, 18 years, that's a lot of experience in education that you have. So I'm interested to see like where you go with this one. But you know, one of the things we talk about on this podcast a lot is failure and uh, you know, what we can learn from it, how we get through it. So can you share a story with us about a time that you've had a failure, how you overcame that and then what you, what you took away from that, what you learned from that experience? Absolutely. Um, So I listened to the podcast, so I obviously knew this was going to be a question, and I thought (laughs) that it wouldn't be a big deal, but when I sat down and really thought about it, um, this was really hard, um, especially to narrow it down, but um, there was this one year where if I could have failed at it, I failed at it. Um, So for anybody that doesn't know me, um, we adopted both of our children um, from China. And so when we brought our daughter home, we brought her home over the summer. And um, the year after we brought her home, I started the year on maternity leave, which is just um, for anybody that's a workaholic. uh, I mean, that's just the most difficult thing to start a year that way. 
And because I started that way, um, I was started the year just very behind. Um, there was a lack of communication between my sub and myself. Um, and so when I came back to school in November, um, I just really was behind. I didn't have the community with my students. Um, I didn't know anything about them. I didn't know where they were curriculum wise. I didn't know their personalities or their behaviors. Um, but it was November. And so I was trying to frantically make up that time um, that I had missed. Um, but the problem was I didn't have the time to put into it because I was a new mom. And so um, I was stressed at work because I was behind and I was stressed at home because I was behind and nobody was sleeping. So I was exhausted. And one thing just led to another. And I, I went from being um, very confident in my job to um, having problems with parents because I wasn't um, communicating well. Um, I didn't form the relationships with my students. Um, it led to problems with my teammates um, because I was just in this cycle of um, stress and negativity. Um, and so I just became this negative person that I didn't even recognize. Um, and my only strategy at that point was complaining about it, um, which obviously didn't work. And so the year went on um, and I continued to have problems pretty much with everybody in the professional um, setting. Um, and it got to the point where by the end of the year, I was having panic attacks on the way to school um, because I was so um, deep into this negative cycle that I didn't know how to get myself out of it. Um, so one thing led to another and um, it ended up at the end of the year that I had, um, we had to switch babysitters, um, which led to me switching schools so that I could be closer to the babysitter. Um, and when I left that situation, um, I knew that that was my time to get out of that cycle. Um, and I knew that I had to make some changes. And so I just made this promised to myself that I was no longer going to be the most negative person in the room, that I was going to be the most positive person. And if I couldn't be the most positive, then I, I wasn't going to say anything. I, I had to stop myself from the complaining. Um, and it also put um, a spotlight on the fact that self-care and coping mechanisms are so incredibly important because I went from being um fully focused on my job and having the time to focus on my job to now um, not having that extra time. And I didn't know how to deal with it, um, which just completely turned my world upside down. So it turned out to be a positive. Um, I met some incredible educators um, by switching schools, but it was definitely an eye-opening um, learning experience. Yeah, that sounds like an eye-opening experience, and it's just a tough year. I mean, a lot of stuff that stacked up and 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 made it really difficult for you to, to come around there. I I love the the reflection on it, seeing uh, you know the importance of of self care and the importance of being aware of how you you know your positive negative feelings and positive negative uh, things you say and the way you act and stuff and, that, and how you flip that around. So I really love that story a lot. Let's let's flip this around now. Let's talk about a successful moment you had. And this could be something big or something small, but tell us what happened. Why was it a success for you? And then what did you take away from that experience? So my really big one is um, presenting at Teach Better 19. Um, I don't think you can um, top that um, until Teach Better 21, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I love but, that you just said um, that. that. I was really the best thing ever. <laughs> I've got my sights set on on next year. Um, so I have to tell you, Ray, when I first started Teachers Deserve It, um, you spoke in the beginning about your Enneagram and um, how you felt about your Enneagram. And I completely, yes, I completely relate to that. In fact, I read it and I had to put the book down and like step away and process because um, I am the same way. And so when I think about success, um, the things that like really fill my bucket are the things that um, when someone recognizes the hard work and the, the um, 
effort that went into making something successful. And so um, thinking back to my failure of a year, um, parent communication was never a strong suit of mine. Um, I would never say it was a, a complete weakness, but it wasn't ever anything I learned how to do or um, really felt strong in. So when I left that situation, um, that was one thing I really focused on was um, communicating with parents and knowing, being more intentional about how I did it and when I did it and what I communicated. And so um, last year when we went to remote learning, that was brand new f- for everybody. Um, but it was especially big in our area because we have so many parents that don't have internet. So it wasn't just a simple transition to um, online. We really had to find ways to communicate outside of Google Classroom or outside of our class dojo. Um, And so I put a lot of effort into that. And um, at the end of last year, I received um, a a dojo message. And then I received a really long handwritten letter from two different moms who just really um, shared their appreciation for the the effort and the time and the um, relationships I had built with their kids. Um, And I think that was probably like one of the big um, success stories because I was really able to do something that I felt like I was a failure at um, and then have somebody else recognize how hard I'd worked um, to make it more of a success. Maggie, I have so many pieces of that that I want to tear apart that I don't even know where to begin. But I, I love that you highlighted that success because so many educators try things and reflect. And, and after that reflection, really feel like it went well, but it really goes above and beyond when somebody sees it and like names it and acknowledges it to celebrate like the teacher that tried something. I mean, to have a parent or a student or or a tech company, whatever it is, to have somebody see the effort and then thank you for it really does mean a lot. You're extremely spot on about that. And when you relate it back to the Enneagram score, which I'm not sure how familiar our listeners are with that, how would you describe that, Maggie? It's like a like a personality evaluation, right? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's really complex. You guys can go look at it. I know like Jeff's like cringing. He hates that <laughs> stuff. But I that was one of the hardest chapters to write because it was really you're you're kind of like being vulnerable and talking about like right or wrong. This is how I, you know, perceive information. This is how I feel appreciated. Da 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 da. And I'm so glad to find another person that like <laughs> understands the the need, the the desire to be seen by others. You know, it's not yeah. necessarily something that I'm aspiring to, but it's the truth of how I operate. And I think it's so great to connect with you on that. Um, I do want our listeners to know, I'm kind of going off track here. Maggie, I want our listeners, they have to know like how essential you were at the Teach Better conference. Like, oh. I don't mean to sound dorky, but... First of all, I knew you virtually because everyone on the Teach Better team talked about how great you were. Oh. So we had never really met, but I knew who you were like from the moment you walked into that conference. And then you and Amanda and all these other great educators, really this conference was full of passionate people, but a lot of people came on their own and like didn't know anybody else. And so a lot of the fun that I got to do, and I know other members of the team, I know Jeff did it a ton, was introduce educators who, you know, were going to make their, you know, best friends at, at this conference. And I swear, I think everybody I met, I was like, oh, you should come meet Maggie. <laughs> like you were my, you were my safest educator to go to, to no matter who I brought to you. It was like, you just embraced them oh. as family and made them feel welcome. And I just so loved that you were right. Or like, whether you knew it or not, or agreed to it or not, I just was constantly like, like throwing people at you. Cause I'm like, you're so wonderful. You make people feel so welcome. And I feel like I just kept popping over to you guys. So I just so appreciate how wonderful you were at that conference. Cause you made so many people feel so wonderful. Oh, thank you. I, I'm glad we were able to do that. It's, I know it's um, kind of, um, I don't know how to say it. I, it's, you've got to be nervous to be able to come to um, a conference and not know anybody. And I know Amanda and I kind of felt that same way, even though we knew of 
a lot of people, like you said, we had never actually met many of them. So it was fun to, to meet new people and kind of connect that way and still stay in contact. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, you know, it's nerve wracking to kind of walk up to somebody, especially if you're not sure, like, especially if you don't know them, but even if you kind of feel like, you know, them virtually, it's nerve wracking to walk up and kind of introduce yourself, right? It's kind of like what we teach students to do in kindergarten, like walk up, let's make friends. It's kind of the same at a conference. And so it was just so wonderful to be able to be in conversation with somebody and then introduce them to somebody that I knew would treat them so well. And I just so appreciate that being your approach, I'm sure with a lot of things, but in that conference, it was just so funny. Um, kind of like experiencing that weekend with you guys was so fun. So when it comes to all the work you're doing, because like I said, the team has, I feel like, been connected to you forever. What's really keeping you excited right in this moment about education? Well, right now, for me personally, I am super excited about um doing approaching mastery learning with my first graders. And that is such a nerdy response that that's what I'm excited about. Um, But like you said, we've been connected with the Teach Better team for a long time. And um, Amanda Post, who was my teammate the past few years, we really dove into the grid method. um, And we took something that most people thought would be for upper grades and older students. And we brought it down and we made it applicable um, to primary students. And so we did that with second grade. And then this year I went to first grade and I was adamant that we were going to use the grid. Um, And it has been so much fun um, diving into it with first graders. Um, Obviously, it, it has to be adapted even more to first graders. Um, but just opening them up to this world of they can control their learning. They can be independent learners. Um, they can work at their own pace. Um, it's just been so much fun to watch them. Um, and it's been exciting for me because I feel like this mastery learning um, really digs down deep into this core belief that I've always had about students and how they learn and what's um, developmentally appropriate. Um, But it's now I have a a way to organize it. And, um, you know, I've really worked with um, first grade on getting them to kind of know what they know and know what they don't know. And, moving forward with that, asking questions and kind of monitoring their own learning. And parallel with that um, comes the work with the DOK um, and really focusing in on those critical thinking skills and having students analyze. Um, And I think there's this perception that Um, primary students, especially in our K-1 strand, they just can't do it. It's too hard. Um, They're not ready for it. And so lots of times when you get down to the K-1, you see so much fluff. Um, For example, I'm working on a gingerbread unit right now, and I really, really want to work on comparing and contrasting and analyzing text. Um, And so I'm not one to reinvent the wheels. So I go out to see what other people have done. And it's amazing the things that I find that someone has put some clip art on and called it part of a unit. Um, And it's really just fluff, you know, it's just, and don't get me wrong, we have fun and we play and that's one of the exciting things about first grade is that we can do all this while we play and have fun with it. Um, But it's exciting to me to bring this mastery learning down and really dive into um, those critical thinking skills and having um, my six and seven year olds take what they know and then push it a little bit farther. So, um, 
yeah, as like I said, as nerdy as that sounds, that's just um, this super exciting um, place that I'm in right now. Maggie, your nerdy excitement inspires me. I'm a fan. <laughs> I don't think it's nerdy at all. I think this is a great opportunity. You know, I it's been a it's been a horrible year for so many people, but there is always a silver lining. And one of the beautiful things I've seen educators do is be resilient and empower each other and explore progressive concepts. And as you talk about mastery learning in an elementary setting, while I know you've been doing that for a while. It's also something that a lot of educators are trying to see, and you are such a good model for uh, for them to to begin making that transition. I just think that the work you do is incredible. I'm jealous that I have not been to your classroom. It's like on my bucket list, so I want to <laughs> see it in action. I might have to like zoom in somehow when like the world gets more normal, or I'll travel over to your neck of the woods. Yes, come on down. We'd love to have you. I love it. So Maggie, I'm sure you have a lot of pieces of advice. You've been given, you've even provided some in your answers thus far, but what's one piece of advice that you would like to give? And we usually say a new teacher, but it really can be any educator. What piece of advice do you want them to consider? So I would say that um, the one thing I would say is when you approach what you do in the classroom, make sure you're always doing what's best for kids. And that seems so simple and so, um, you know, so mundane and normal. But I remember coming out of college um, and I'm excited and passionate. And I remember just encountering people who we're not doing what's best for kids. And that's not always intentional. You know, a lot of people have very good intentions, um, but it's not student focused. And then not knowing really how to deal with that um, and, and kind of getting sucked into maybe someone else's ideas or someone else's thinking that wasn't always best for students. And so You know, there will always be um, parents and administrators and teachers um, who have maybe their own agenda or their own bias um, as to um, students and what they can do and what they can't do and um, their own agendas with curriculum and and assessment and whatever. Um, And I would just encourage you to just deep down inside, make sure that what you're doing um, and what you're saying to others is always putting kids and students first. Mm. Spot on. No matter what, do what's right for kids. I love it. Um, Maggie, this has been fun hearing your, your take on all these questions that we get to ask everybody and just having you been around from with us for so long and now finally getting to ask you all this stuff. So I'm really excited about this part now. <laughs> uh, and I know you listen. I know, you know, it's coming. So we're going to do it here. We're going to do the next six yes. questions. Your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. Are you ready? I am ready. I've got it. Now, all right. What is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Uh, all Google tools and boom cards. Give us a book you're reading right now. Um, Teachers Deserve It by Adam and Ray. The Happy Teachers Handbook by Jen Molitor. And then I always have a fiction book ready. And right now I'm reading a series by Robert DeConey. Uh, who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? Uh, John Gordon for positivity, learning at the primary pond for literacy ideas and educate the heart collective for some really amazing uh, book choices. Uh, What's a good YouTube channel, website, or podcast for educators to check out? Uh, Shake up learning with Casey Bell for tech tips. Give us a day. And it's all free. (laughs) Yes. And she's awesome. Uh, Give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Reflect, 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 reflect. Um, It needs to be done daily, weekly, monthly. Every time you do it, you'll get a different uh, viewpoint. Um, I'm shocked when I hear that people don't do this. I do it naturally, but reflect. And what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, There are two. Go slow to go fast. So make sure you build that foundation first. And then perception is reality. Mm. Mm, what do you so think, Ray? Good. Perception is reality. Whew. 
These are good things. Maggie, I knew you were going to kill it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's cheating, but I gave you the Teach Better Talk trophy before we even started recording. So, <laughs> like, if it needs to be said, then for the sake of the recording, go for it. But in my mind, like, you logged on and I'm like, oh, the trophy's been won. It already <laughs> happened. <laughs> no, it's I'll so take it. It's so awesome, Maggie, to hear your story. I really want to encourage the bottom of my heart. Please, please, please connect with Maggie to all of our, you know, Teach Better team family members, to all of our listeners here on the podcast. Um, I truly love when great people connect with other great people. And Maggie, I have you so high on a pedestal of just being a wonderful person who just does such incredible work. So would you mind sharing how our listeners can stay connected to you? Yeah. Um, so Facebook is going to be uh, more personal, my family and stuff, if you're interested in that. And that's just my name. Um, and then Twitter and Instagram are the same at Gifford M621. And then as of today, super, super recent, um, I started my own blog. Oh. Um, yes. And it is, it is bare bones right now, but it is published. Um, so that is coffeechaoslove.blogspot.com. Oh, I like it. Awesome. And you know, you can find all the links, all the resources, everything we mentioned in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as really important links for connecting with Maggie, keeping this conversation going, checking out her brand new blog. Uh, so head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and share this podcast with them. Maggie. Um, as expected, this was an awesome episode. So appreciate you coming on. Just love, 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 love having you in our in our world as part of our family uh, and to get to know you better and better. So thank you so much for coming on and giving us some of your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better. <laughs>